Hi, and welcome to another in a series of technology tips brought to you by K2 Enterprises. My name is Tommy Stevens, and for the next several minutes, it will be my pleasure to lead you through a discussion on how you can link QuickBooks data into Excel. I hope you're looking forward to a good session. I certainly am. Let's jump right into the material that we have to share with you today. And we will begin by talking about just exactly what we want to do and how we're going to do it. First, it's very important to understand that QuickBooks and frankly most other accounting applications do not necessarily natively provide access uh, to the data. That is, if we want to link the data out of our accounting application, we generally have to incorporate some other, uh, let's call it middleman technology between the accounting database and Excel in this case. And the specific technology that we're going to use here is something called Open Database Connectivity, or ODBC, uh, if we want to use the acronym. Now, without, uh, without going into uh, enormous amounts of detail regarding what ODBC is, for our purposes today, let's just use a working definition of ODBC in that it serves as the middleman between a database and any other application that is attempting to access data from that database. It's important to understand ODBC is not new. It's been around for over 20 years now, but it is a very uh, fundamental utility that we can use to really uh, accelerate and accentuate various reports and analyses that we might want to do when we need to bring data into Excel, Access, or other applications. So again, we're just going to work off the definition today that Open Database Connectivity, or ODBC, serves as that middleman between a uh, data sitting in a database and an application that wants to access that data. So in this case, we want to access some of the accounting data that's stored in our accounting application. Uh, in this example, we'll use QuickBooks, but it could be virtually any other accounting application. And we want to link that data into Excel for reporting and analysis purposes. Now, if you'll notice, I put a little bit of emphasis on the term link there because I'm not looking for an export-import process. I'm not looking for a copy-paste process. I'm looking to establish, let's call it a live link between Excel and my accounting application, which again, in this case, will be QuickBooks. That way, I only have to do this one time once I get it set up and working properly and build all of my reports uh, from the data that we're linking into Excel. I never have to go back and reconstruct this. I can merely just refresh the data whenever I need to see updated information. Now again, to make this happen, because QuickBooks does not natively supply an open database connectivity driver, we must first obtain and install one. The driver that I will be using in this example is one provided by a company called CData, and you will notice that their website is www.cdata.com, although there are certainly drivers available from other companies. In fact, if you are running QuickBooks Enterprise Solutions, Enterprise Solutions does in fact provide you with access to an open database connectivity driver. Uh, and the driver that is provided through Enterprise Solutions is one published by a company known as QODBC.com. So again, QODBC.com is the company that publishes the driver that's used by Enterprise Solutions. If you do have access to Enterprise Solutions, you can click on the File menu inside Enterprise Solutions uh, and then go to Utilities, and there you will see the option to set up and to configure Open Database Connectivity. I have already installed the C data driver on this computer, so we don't have to, we're not going to go through the configuration process of the driver. Rather, let's jump directly into QuickBooks now and let's get started with linking the data out of QuickBooks into Excel for reporting and analysis purposes. Now, as you can see, I've toggled over to Excel. More specifically, in this case, I'm running Excel 2019, but that's not really relevant here. That is the year. We could certainly do this in prior versions of Excel, and presumptively, we can do it in uh, Excel 2020, which, was, uh, which is already on the market, and perhaps even future releases of Excel also. Additionally, it's important to know that if you're running QuickBooks Online, you can do this with QuickBooks Online as well. Um, so again, it, it's not something that is necessarily limited to a specific version of QuickBooks or a specific version of Excel. Rather, this is somewhat of a universal technology. 
Now, once you install your driver, where whatever company is providing the driver, you're going to need to go into QuickBooks and make just one slight, um, let's call it adjustment inside the QuickBooks application. More specifically, click on the Edit tab of the ribbon and go to Preferences. And when you're in Preferences, go to Integrated Applications, followed by Company Preferences. And somewhere in this list of integrated applications, you should see the name of the driver that you have installed. In my case, it's that C data driver that I referenced just for you just a few moments ago. And it's important to make sure that you are allowing the driver to communicate, to talk with QuickBooks. And you do so just by checking that box uh, in the Allow Access column. If that box is not checked, then QuickBooks does not have, shall we say, permission uh, to, to talk through the driver to the external application, which again, in this case, is going to be Excel. Now that we have that configured, we're ready to jump to Excel and begin linking the data into the Excel application. Now, as you can see, I have toggled over to Excel, and I am ready to utilize Open Database Connectivity to link the QuickBooks data uh, into this particular Excel workbook. So I'm going to begin by just clicking anywhere inside the workbook. It's not really uh, important what cell I click in. And then once I've done that, from the Data tab of the ribbon, I'll click on the Data tab of the ribbon, and I'm going to utilize the Power Query functionality in Excel. And in doing so, I am going to click where it currently says Get Data. And I want to obtain my data from something other than one of the standard data sources that's provided through Power Query. More specifically, I will choose From Other Sources and then scroll down until I see From ODBC. I click on From ODBC and momentarily we'll see a listing of all of the ODBC sources that are available here. And I will click down in this list and choose the CData QuickBooks source. Now, again, you're not going to see that unless you actually, of course, have installed the CData driver. So I choose that particular data option, and I click OK. And in just a few seconds, we will have the opportunity, as you can see appearing on the screen now, we'll have the opportunity to dig into this a little bit deeper. I'll dig just a little bit deeper under the, C, under the C data option, I should say. And there you can see I have the option of linking data in from QuickBooks. Now, when I choose to link data from QuickBooks, this is going to link from the currently open QuickBooks file. Okay, so I, the, the file that you saw just a few moments ago, uh, that file is currently open. Uh, I, I left it open. And whatever data we link now is going to be coming from that currently open file. Now notice you are able to link through the CData driver, and this is going to be uh, dependent upon which driver you use. Here are examples of certain reports, for example, uh, that if you wanted to link these various reports or, or views of data, you could actually just go ahead and link those directly into the application. We're going to do it a little bit differently. We're going to go down and actually link individual tables of transactions into QuickBooks so that we can build some type of report off of each of these uh, tables of transactions. Now, I'm going to do a very simple example here. I've determined for whatever reason that I want to go in and take a look at uh, some accounts payable information. More specifically, I want to look at some accounts payable bill expense distributions. So somebody has gone into accounts payable, they've entered bills into accounts payable, and I want to see what the expense distributions, what, what expense accounts are being affected by these accounts payable entries. And further, let's assume that um, whatever reports QuickBooks provides to me, doesn't that those reports may not necessarily satisfy my specific reporting needs. I can get a preview of what that data is going to look like over on the right-hand side of the screen. Uh, in this example, though, let's assume that uh, as I look through that, I, I've determined that everything is good for me there. So what I'm going to do is where it currently reads load down near the bottom, I am going to click on that and say that I want to load this data to. Now, the reason I'm choosing load to instead of load, if I load the data, that is the first option, it is going to load directly into the data model, and then you won't be able to see it. Um, and from an educational perspective, I think it's important that you actually see the data. So I'm going to choose load to, which as you will see momentarily, that gives me some additional options, including to say, load this data to a table. 
If I wanted to put it in the data model here, I could do that, but that's beyond the scope of what we're here to talk about today. So I'm going to choose to load this data to a table, and then I will click OK. At this point, the ODBC driver is connecting to QuickBooks, and it's linking, not copying and pasting, not exporting and importing, but it is linking all of that data out of the accounting application into Excel. It was not a tremendously large volume of data, as you can see over here on the right-hand side. There were only 129 rows of data, but that's that's immaterial as far as our um, as far as our concerns are uh, today. It, it could have been 129 rows. It could have been of 129,000 rows for all we care. It brought in that entire table of data. There were many other columns over here to the right, as you can see. And now what I want you to understand is I can do anything with this data that I would ordinarily do with data uh, as if I had, for example, key punched the data directly into Excel. That, that is, I can go in and build formulas, I can build charts, I can build pivot tables, I can do anything with this data that I want to do with it. To create a very, very quick and simple example, let's suppose that we want to summarize this data with a pivot table. So I'm going to say, let's use this table that we just linked in from Excel. Let's go and say we want to put our pivot table on a new worksheet, click OK, and now this is going to be a pivot table like every other pivot table you perhaps have built. I'll take the vendor name and drag and drop that down into the rows quadrant. I'll take the date and put that in the columns quadrant. And then finally, uh, we'll keep it very simple here. I'll just take the amount field and drag and drop the amount field into the values quadrant. I'll very quickly apply a little bit of formatting to my pivot table. Let's right click and say that we want to group the data together by months, quarters, and also years. So now we've got uh, the data summarized that way. Let's widen out this column. And then finally, let's right click on any of those numbers and apply a little numerical formatting in the form of the accounting format, two decimal places, but no currency symbol. Click OK. And one more time, let's widen those columns out. And now you can see I have a pivot table that is summarizing all of that transactional detail for me. Now to underscore the fact that this data is linked, not copied and pasted, not exported, uh, but, but truly linked from the underlying QuickBooks database into our um, into our spreadsheet and ultimately, of course, into our pivot table, let's go and say that we want to actually collapse all of this information. So I'm going to collapse the entire field, uh, which will provide us, as you see over here on the far left-hand side, a more summarized version of the pivot table. In fact, I'm going to do that one more time and say that I want to collapse it even on the, on the years. So now we're just looking at annual totals of the data. Uh, this way we're not getting bogged down in tremendous amounts of detail. Now, with that said, I want you to focus on the fact that we are looking at a grand total in the lower right-hand corner of about $92,000 in accounts payable transactions over whatever period of time we happen to have here. Let's go back into QuickBooks now, and let's add an accounts payable transaction. Whatever this transaction might be, I'm going to click where it says Enter Bills, of course, inside QuickBooks, and I will pick a specific vendor. Let's just take the first one there. We don't want to post against any purchase orders. We'll go ahead and post this transaction as of 12-15-2013. But what I want you to see is I'm going to post this uh, with a very large dollar amount, $100,000, for example. And furthermore, let's go and change this general ledger account so that we're posting it to something like, oh, I don't know, how about, um, how about accounting fees? Now let's go ahead and save that transaction, and if what I have told you is true about this information being linked into Excel, not copied and pasted, then when we go back to our report, and I just did, and I right-click anywhere on this pivot table and I choose Refresh, it's going now and grabbing a fresh set of data, but that fresh set of data has not yet received the update from the ODBC connection. In, order, in other words, see that none of the numbers actually changed. What I must first do is actually refresh the query, and then I can refresh the pivot table from the results of the query. I can do that several different ways, including going to the Data tab of the ribbon and say that I want to refresh all queries and connections. And so that 
is in the background now refreshing the data query and updating, shall we say kind of in the background of Excel, it's updating the results of the data query uh, with a newly entered transaction. With that information updated, now if I right click anywhere on the pivot table and choose refresh, as you can see, our 2023 number just increased by the $100,000 that we posted previously. So clearly we have a link between the underlying database, our underlying accounting software database in this case, which is QuickBooks, and our Excel workbooks. And I can use that for reporting purposes, for analysis purposes, perhaps for fraud detection purposes, for anything that I so desire. I hope you found this to be useful. I think open database connectivity represents a tremendous opportunity for us to revolutionize how we build a lot of our reports, no matter the accounting application or service we happen to be using. This is somewhat of a universal technology uh, that is available pretty much across the board. Again, the key here is obtaining, downloading, and installing the appropriate ODBC driver for whatever accounting application you're working with. Once you do that, I think you'll find open database connectivity to be pretty easy to work with. Thanks for stopping by. Once again, I hope this has been useful to you. Check back with us often as we routinely add new videos to our YouTube channel. Have a wonderful day, and on behalf of everyone at K2 Enterprises, we look forward to serving you again very soon.